OK, so we're comparing a circle's area as compared to its radius. OK, now the question says, uh, write the relationship between the variables using k as the constant of variation. So that's why you can see why I have used k. k can be any number you like, but the key is that it's constant, whereas y and x are variable. They can change. Okay? So I think they're calling this guy a for area. And because the area of a circle, it varies directly not with the radius, but with the square of the radius, this is the way I would write this. Okay? Now, this is a formula we're very familiar with. We know what k is. It has its own special name. What is it? Pi. It's pi. <clears throat> so pi, I'm going to label it here. I'd love you to do it as well. Pi is the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. Different words, same idea. Okay, so this statement here uh, fits into this guy here, right? You could say the area is proportional to the square of the radius. Now, I want us to do something interesting in here. Underneath, could um, you please draw a set of axes? I need some more space. Um, because we're dealing with measurements, an area and also a length, what I'd like us to do is only to draw the um, top right hand side of a Cartesian plane because we only need the positive parts for radius and the co positive parts for area. Okay, So draw yourself up something like this. I have a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. Which one would you like to make the radius? Which one do you think makes sense? Um, the horizontal axis? So I will point out, it's, um, we usually call this guy the x-axis but it's not the x-axis, it's the, the radius, the r-axis in this case. So I'll just label it r. That makes the other guy a. I agree that that's a natural choice, because usually we would think of area depending on radius, so it's dependent. Now, uh, what I'd like you to do is, um, with the help of your friends next to you, just get a few values. Uh, maybe we could go up to, say, ooh, maybe something like, say, r equals 4. So if I have 0 over here, go 1, 2, 3, 4. Find out what you're going to get as the biggest value so you can settle on an appropriate scale. And then I'd like you to plot the points. Then we can join them up and get a shape. Can you do that for me? Get some values. We know uh, what the constant is, so it's pi r squared. Go ahead and try some things and see what you get. I do. Where is yours, Sandra? Sorry. You need it. Uh, the, the wiggly thing. Um, actually, I don't know its name. Um, I think of it as, the, I call it the proportionality symbol. But I do know that all kinds of things have proper names. Like, I keep doing this far out. Um, this is not the and symbol. This is actually called the ampersand. Uh, we call this a hashtag, but it's actually called the octothorpe. Um, they all have different names. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, well, anyway. Um, so I don't know what the name, if you look it up, Proportionality symbol, something like that. Look it up. Um, yeah, see if you. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, even things like this. You know how we call this the square root symbol? It's actually called the the radix symbol. Well, radical actually means um, root. That's actually the, it's the and it's the same thing that radius means. But anyway, uh, it's the adjective of root in Latin, I think. Anyway. So, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, um, has someone decided on what the highest value will be, just so I can start to draw a scale? 50.265. Um, so therefore, maybe I'll put it 60? How about that? Okay. Now, some of these are easy to do. Um, for example, when r equals 0, when r equals 0, I know what the area will be. When r is 0, what's the area? 0. It's just 0. So I can put a point there. There's my first point. When r equals 1, it's just as easy to calculate. 
R squared is one, so um, one squared rather. So it'll just be pi, which is like 3.14, okay? So on my scale here, I've got 15 here, so I'm gonna be, have to be quite low. I'm gonna put it as something like that. What'd you get for two? When R is two, what is the area? 12.57. 12.57, thank you very much. So I'm still below my 15 marker. Uh, when R equals three? Anyone got there yet? 28.27, okay, so I'm somewhere about there. And my last one, Eliane, you said that was 50-ish, right? 50, okay, thank you very much. Uh, 28, okay. So you can see here, the shape that we're tracing out predictably is the shape of a, it's a parabola. Now, here's the funny thing. We're used to seeing, thinking of parabolas when there are x squareds around, right? But this is just a different labeling of an x squared. I'm just using a different letter. I could call it whatever squared I like. I could call it s squared or t squared or holy squared. That's a scary idea. So I can give this label anything I want. Sorry, I was just looking at you and I thought that. Um, so this is a parabola just like anything else, even though it's an r, not an x. Can you join them up for me? Is it? Now, Exponential growth and this kind of growth do look very similar on a small scale. Um, but exponential growth will always outrun uh, growth like this. So, and that's why we call it exponential. Now, here's where it gets really weird and interesting, okay? This is a graph, and this is worth actually naming this. This is a graph of A, the area, um, and here's a weird use of the word, but they use the word against. This is a graph of area against radius, okay? What they mean is the area is one axis and the radius is the other, okay? 